So, let me be very clear. I wrote this poem with a very specific intent. Um, I have a 13-year-old daughter. It is important to me that I throw every part of my experience and whatever wisdom I've gleaned from that, every, back, every part of my backbone toward her to sustain her, to offer her language that lifts her up and keeps her up. That said, there is for me a necessary conversation that seeks to undermine the shaming that happens to some girls around menstruation. Um, I had that experience of starting my period in seventh grade boys, you know, finding out that I had started my period and then, you know, it was some shit. Like, you know, I'd be in the class with the frantic, like, gotta go to the bathroom now, wave, and then you're like, oh, you're in a period, aren't you? Uh, you know, that dumb shit. <laughs> and so, I, so then my daughter, you know, like she starts her period and she's stricken and walks out the bathroom looking like she's died or something. And I wanted to undermine that. So I threw her a period party. My homies rolled up dressed in red and it was red food and red drinks. It was great. And, uh, it was great. It was great. So, you know, all red everything. Fuck it. So, so that's what it was and it was wonderful. Um, and then when I was in Austin, Texas for Women of the World this year, uh, she sent me a screenshot of a tweet. And in 140 characters, this dummy, you know, damn near uh, undermined my legacy. This is my response to an uh, aforementioned dummy. You're welcome. Dude on Twitter says, quote, I was having sex with my girlfriend when she started her period. I dumped that bitch immediately, end quote. Dear nameless dummy on Twitter, you're the reason. My daughter cried funeral tears when she started her period. The sudden grief all young girls feel after the matriculation from childhood and the induction into a reality that they gonna have to negotiate you and your disdain for what a woman's body can do. Herein begins an anatomy lesson infused with feminist politics because I hate you. <laughs> There is a thing called a uterus. It sheds itself every 28 days or so, or in my case, every 23 days. I've always been a rule breaker. That's the anatomy part I, I digress. The feminist politic part is that women know how to let things go, how to let a dying thing leave the body, how to become new, how to regenerate, how to wax and wane, not unlike the moon and tides, both of which influence how you behave, I digress. <laughs> Women have vaginas that can speak to each other. By this I mean, when we're with our friends, our sisters, our mothers, our menstrual cycles will actually sync the fuck up. <laughs> My own cervix is mad influential. Everybody I love knows how to bleed with me. Hold on to that. There's a metaphor in it. Hold on to that. But when your mother carried you, the ocean in her belly is what made you buoyant, made you possible. You had it under your tongue when you burst through her skin, wet and panting from the heat of her body, the body whose machinery you now mock on social media, that body wrapped you in everything that was miraculous about it and sung you lullabies laced in platelets, without which you wouldn't have no Twitter account at all, motherfucker, I digress. See, it's possible that we know the world better because of the blood that visits some of us. It interrupts our favorite white skirts and shows up at dinner parties unannounced. Blood will do that, period. It will come when you are not prepared for it. Blood does that, period. Blood is the biggest siren, and we understand that blood misbehaves. It does not wait for a hand signal or a welcome sign above the door. And when you deal in blood over and over again like we do, when it keeps returning to you, well, that makes you a warrior. And while all good generals know not to discuss battle plans with the enemy, let me say this to you, dummy, on Twitter. If there's any balance in the universe at all, 
you gonna be blessed with daughters. <laughs> blessed. Etymologically, blessed means to make bleed. See, now it's a lesson in linguistics. In other words, blood speaks. That's the message, stay with me. See, your daughter's gonna teach you what all men must one day come to know, that women made of moonlight, magic, and macabre will make you know the blood. We gonna get it all over the sheets and car seats. We gonna do that. We gonna introduce you to our insides, period. And if you are as unprepared as we sometimes are, it'll get all over you and leave a forever stain. So to my daughter, should any fool mishandle the wild geography of your body, how it rides a red running current, like any good wolf or witch, well then just bleed, boo. Give that blood a biblical name, something of stone and mortar. Name it after Eve's first rebellion in that garden. Name it after the last little girl to have her genitals mutilated in Kinshasa. That was this morning. Give it as many syllables as there are unreported rape cases. Name the blood something holy, something mighty, something unlanguageable, something in hieroglyphs, something that sounds like the end of the world. Name it for the roar between your legs and for the women who will not be nameless here. Just bleed anyhow. Spill your impossible scripture all over the good furniture. Bleed and bleed and bleed on everything he loves. Period.